Welcome to another episode of the Ground Control Branching Out podcast. I'm your devilishly handsome host, Neil Bailey. And in this episode, we're talking to Andrew Sullivan, a.k.a. Mechman. More of that later if you haven't come across him yet. So let's get straight into it and find out exactly what makes this guy tick. So, Andrew, thanks so much for being uh, on the podcast. If you uh, would, for us, just uh, kind of introduce yourself. So who are you and, and what's your role? Uh, so my name's Andy Sullivan, uh, and I'm the site manager and COS for Ground Control's Mechanised Division, uh, okay. shorthanded to GC Mech. GC Mech, lovely. And what do you do? So what what does that mean? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I I see myself as a PA for the rest of the team. Nice. Um, <laughs> so that that's the way I see it. Is uh, you know the guys on the team have got a fantastic wealth of knowledge you know you know really really skilled and experienced at what they do so my job is to facilitate them to be able to do their job right yeah brilliant so, so what does we, good job, go on. so yeah we, we we obviously work uh in all the verticals of ground control so we work railways highways waterways uh construction oh, okay. uh, utilities yep. so we we have to be skilled and qualified in all facets of that um so it's running a diverse uh range of sites coming across yep. A diverse range of problems uh, yeah. and problem solving those with the rest of the team. Interesting. So, how many? It might be how long's a piece of string. But how many kind of pieces of kit do we have? You know, how, how, what what do you have to play with? So, in terms of heavy machinery, this is just uh, in terms of kit that we own, because obviously we yep. can also hire stuff in as well for of course. projects. Sure. Um, starting from the ground up, so we've got uh, the eight-ton Kubota excavator. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is what we tend to use for chipping or for tight access sites. Yeah. Uh, we have got a new eight ton uh, Cabelco that's on the way. So watch this space. Uh, <laughs> Fingers crossed. We, yeah, hopefully we're just waiting for that to land. Uh, we've got two 14 ton Cabelcos, which you've probably seen if you've seen any of the uh, content we've put on Instagram or LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. um, so we've got the Blue Beast, which is the first one. And we've got the second one, uh, which is uh, it's called the Blue Beast. Okay, um, nice. <laughs> that's an unofficial title, but it's what the team has gone with. <laughs> that's, that's on the claim uh, quotes, obviously. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, you know, trying to find alliteration for it is, it is difficult. <laughs> um, then we've got the, the 32 ton Cabelco, uh, which is a, it's a 27 tonner, but with additional uh, weights and pieces on it. It's just over 32 tons. Uh, and that has the mechanical head, so that's extremely long reach. Yeah. Uh, great for dismantling yeah. big trees. Uh, yeah. And then obviously we've got the, uh, the Menzi Muck. Uh, yeah, which is is the flag the flagship model that's that's the one that everyone loves yeah um terrifying piece of kit to to operate they have let me uh use it it's <laughs> it's too too many buttons too many right. buttons for me it's it's yeah. a spaceship but um you've got a few of the guys david boys jamie riley and josh airy all operate that and they're all fantastic Re really yeah. good guys at what they do uh, and then we've got two tractors two vouchers and they help us move everything around and then obviously our, our bandit 28 20 xp uh which is a whole tree chipper as well right yeah so, and I assume you've got like HGVs or whatever to move them about. Would that be right? No. So we've got a plant trailer, which oh, okay. uh, we use our, our tractor. So we can move stuff around, but we use that for more local stuff. So the sure. project we're running at the moment is um, is a highways project for Skanska and National Highways. So yep. we're working across probably close to 30 different sites within this huge project. So the ability to move kit, at short notice between the different sides right yeah uh, it's fantastic but when we're doing the longer range stuff we actually we've we're partnered with a haulage firm called civil wise so we do use okay. other people as well but we work quite closely with these um, guys yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And that, that's how we transport the kit nationally right yeah that may, i suppose that makes sense because it's it's less time for an hgv just to be sitting around waiting to take something to the next site i guess so yeah it's it, it's something we're looking into yeah um but but for now um you know as, as good as vertical integration is where we can own all parts of the yeah. uh, the process being able to outs outsource that at short notice without the overheads is, is worth yeah. well for us yeah absolutely yeah i can i can understand the the too many buttons but back in back in the previous <laughs> yeah. life you used to do used to do quite a lot of tractor driving and these days most of the tractors have way too many buttons never mind anything more complex than that so yeah uh, there's a reason i do the paperwork yeah <laughs> Having said that, when I started, there was no cabs on the tractors, but I'm not going to I'm not going to get any <laughs> yeah. further into that. one. Uh, I didn't have to crank the front. I'm not quite that old. No, they, were, um, they weren't horse drawn. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've been asking this question to most and 
OK, I, t I tend to ask what's a typical day look like? And most people go with what's a typical week look like because it's a little bit easier. So kind of over to you. What what does let's go for a week. What does a typical week look like for you then? Busy. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, diverse the majority okay. of the time. And I think that's what draws us into the, the job and the team that we work in. Um, as I said, because we work in all the verticals, you know, I can be a cost and a site manager on rail on a Monday. Yep. Uh, without sounding like a Craig David song on a Tuesday, I could then be on highways. Uh, yep. On a Wednesday, we could be clearing, you know, a lagoon. And we're, we're all uh, water rescue trained as well. So we work in pro close proximity to water. Um, you know, on a, on a Thursday, I could be back on it. I could be on a construction job somewhere. So you, you never know where you're going to be. You never yep. know what discipline you're going to be working under. You don't know what problems you're going to come up on a site. You know, I've been here just coming up to three years now. And, you know, I know it sounds like a cliche, but no two days have, have been the same. Yeah. And that's what keeps us at the table like a bad gambler. <laughs> yeah, I was I was just going to say, is that what you love about it? Yeah, massively. I love the challenge. Yeah. So what got yeah. you into the mech side of it? Is it something you've always been involved with? Pure luck. I think from okay. my perspective, I've, all, I've always got imposter syndrome while I'm here. <laughs> yeah. As I said, you know, you, you look at the guys in the team, you, Jamie, 13 years experience, utility arb, mech. Yeah. David or Boggy, as he's known, about the same, Chris, about the same. And, you know, Josh comes from a forestry background. I was a security contractor and still oh, am, okay. uh, but for about 12 years. I then went into, because I wanted a, a safe, stable job, went into recruitment. I became a senior uh, divisional manager for an engineering division for, for yep. consultancy and worked in an office and hated every minute of it. Right. And I bought a house, knocked it down, rebuilt it, jumped on a little one-ton digger in the garden. I thought, this is nice. This is I can't believe people get paid to do this. And uh, <laughs> a, lad, a lad I went to school with worked here, and he actually operated um, Big Blue, which is the 32-ton Cabelco. Yep. Uh, when I saw him operating that, I just fell in love with the concept, went out, right. got my own tickets, got, got my skills, got a job doing construction. An opportunity came up with... Uh, GC Met, which was called Castor Arb at the time. I interviewed, got right. a job. Pretty quickly, they realised I was pretty poor in a digger, um, <laughs> but but had you know quite a good command of the English language. So I went <laughs> down the management side and did all the paperwork for them. So right. yeah, um, that's that's how it came about. And you know, there's not a single day that I, you know it could be raining sideways, blowing gales, and I go on site and I see that kit working, and I'm just in awe every yeah. day. Yeah, I really am. Yeah. I'm sure there's probably not many people on the planet that haven't come across Mechman as such by now. <laughs> I think the, 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 the subscriber levels must be out off the roof. How did that come about? Jez Light. OK, go on. Yeah, to put it simply, yeah, Jez Light. Um, got a lot of time for Jez. Fantastic guy. I think he, he's a massive asset to GC. I'll, I'll he's cut just this his mindset out. about things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, he's not paid me to say this. Yeah. Um, no, he he had the same viewpoint as me he was just as amazed to see the kit and wanted more people to see the kit and to understand what it was we did how we did it why we did it the capabilities of the team yeah. um you know I and mean, it is yeah i yeah, i mean i'm going to be biased obviously but i think we've got probably one of the best jobs in the country like we work <laughs> with some of the best kit in the best places with some of the best clients um yeah. you know we're we're really lucky and, and Jez saw that as well and said look I want to create a YouTube channel I want to start to get your content out there you know to, to internal stakeholders so that yeah. other people other divisions other teams could mm -hmm. see the kit we have the capabilities and how they could potentially utilize it to make their jobs you know better face faster safer yeah so what got you into the videoing of it and the drone work and you know what where did that um from? I think I, I'm probably better at flying a drone than I was at driving a digger. So. Okay. <laughs> um, no, I, I do a lot of uh, a lot of sort of adventure travel and international travel and stuff as well. So oh, I travelled around okay. around Syria during the war. Um, I've driven around Southern Africa. I've driven from the UK over North Africa over the Sahara. Currently planning wow. another trip in May. So uh, none of it's monetized. I do it do it purely for the love of, of the travel yeah. and adventure. And I started to to video all of that, film it, and obviously utilizing drones and cameras and various other things to produce these videos. Just to to yeah. You know, family and friends and to look back on when i'm when i'm older as we say adventure before dementia yeah um and when i started to see all the kit on site and i thought oh, everyone else surely has got to be just as excited as i am when i see this <laughs> stuff working and I, and I just thought well you know we'll start on instagram and you know i'll put some stuff on linkedin and it gained more traction and more people were interested and then we started to try and clean things up a bit make it a bit smoother and yeah, yeah it's gone really well 
Yeah. So lots of kind of learning by doing on that one. Yes. Yeah. Massively. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, we've done, I've produced videos now, um, obviously for Network Rail, Transport right. for Wales have used them in presentations. Um, oh, so produce the whole thing for them as well. So they, yeah. they've been able to go. So uh, we work for Amy Infrastructure there. So they've been able to then take my videos, go to Transport for Wales and say, look, this is the kit that we're utilising. This is making the industry safer. Yeah. Um, I think SAFE was the uh, was the acronym that Pete Allen was pushing, which was SAFE for arboriculture for everyone. Mm-hmm. So mechanisation, oil, pre- oil pressure over blood pressure, we say. Nice. Um, so these Michael. videos, you know, it's not, not just us using it and we can, oh, we can put it on LinkedIn and how good are we, but clients have been able to use it and we've been able to then take that and win more work off it when we go to clients and being able to use it in yep. presentations. So it's yep. sort of grown exponentially in that sense. Yeah, it's not nice yep. to, to be a part of it. Yeah. And for the drone work, have you done a license? Because I know there are certain licenses yes. of things out there. Yeah. 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 So um, they they actually remove the requirement for the commercial pilot's license. Which okay. is what you used to have to have. Yep. So now I've got I've got the the drone operator ID and a and a pilot's ID, which is it's a short exam you have to do on a government website. Yep. Everyone has to do that if you're going to operate a drone in the UK, which I think is above 250 grams. Don't right. wrong, I'm not not an expert in this field at yep. all. No, yeah. 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 Um, and then I have commercial insurance. Right. So, I, so I have, mm-hmm. yeah, I think it's about ten million pound that I've got for commercial insurance, wow. which G- yeah. Ground Control actually provided me with. So they paid for that for me. Yeah. So I've got a little little card that I carry in my wallet, um, and that means that I'm covered, so I can do that on commercial uh, from a commercial aspect. Yeah, interesting. And what are you looking forward to in your role, kind of over the next period? What what's coming up? In all honesty, I don't know. Okay. Uh, we've been running this, yeah, that, and again, that's that's half the fun. Um, <laughs> I mean, we are we're running three different jobs at the moment. So I'm site managing a large uh, highways construction project uh, for the A428 Black Cat Interchange, so a new uh, new highway scheme that's going in. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'm, I'm site managing that uh, quite closely with my contracts manager Chris Heathcote. Um, right. So we've been on here uh, three and a bit months now. Yep. It's go, going really well. Yeah. Uh, you know, challenges obviously come up on a project of this this scale. Um, but yeah, it's been, been really good. And then we've got two other teams working on other highways projects. And then uh, what was a uh, environment agency job. I think they're moving on to something else now with the Menzi. Um, but we've got rail projects coming up, more highways projects coming up. And um, yeah. yeah, watch this space. Interesting. And you said your next trip is May, did you say? Yes, May. Yeah, yeah. Going so where, where's that one going to be to? Ironing out the details. Originally, oh, okay. it was going to be UK to Bulgaria as an yeah, overland yeah. trip but obviously i've got a seven month old uh baby now right yeah um so you know everyone said when, when we knew we were gonna have a kid and they went oh your adventures are over now oh that's it you're never gonna have enough thought you've just got an imagination barrier exactly it changes things it adds new challenges but it makes it of just course. as exciting and it, and it gives me something else to focus on because i'm showing him the world now yeah you know he's he's got yeah. more stamps in his passport at the moment than most of my my adult friends have got so we're yeah. starting him off on a good leg uh but we're going to be sort of going that that direction to sort of bulgaria about 15 16 nice. countries we'll be covering and that will be driving will it yes yeah i've got yeah. a heavily uh modified toyota hilux okay um, nice <clears throat> so yeah we've become self-sufficient from that yeah brilliant and i'm gonna have to ask probably the really boring question bearing in mind you are so well traveled <laughs> where's your favorite spot <laughs> syria okay so why, why so just the birthplace of civilization the history right. the architecture the people um famous quote says that uh, every man has two homelands his own and syria um i just i loved it i thought it was yeah. just one of the one of the one of the most beautiful places i've been with some like incredible people made some lifelong friends there yeah. um you know going still going through quite a a, a rough time at the moment um yeah yeah i just i fell in love with that place yeah and where's somewhere you haven't been yet that you want to (laughs) uh every other country on the (laughs) good answer yeah there's 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 not a place that that i don't want to go it's just just trying to figure it out um yeah japan's a big one really want to go out and travel japan but i I want to do yeah yeah, we're, we're toying with the idea a few years time maybe take a year or two out and drive uk right. to cape town uh, yep. and, and do the whole of europe yep. some of um some of sort of eurasia cross back in through north africa down the coast and into south so yeah um yeah so you, that, as i for, understand uh, it that would be a huge amount of visas and all that kind of stuff as well i assume yeah board, 
border crossings visas. Uh, you carry a lot of single dollar bills when you travel through Africa. Um, right. Yeah, you, you learn the phrase quite quickly. Uh, is, is there a, a fee that I can pay? Don't oh, okay. use the word bribe. Yeah, no, is, of is there course a fee not. that I can pay to to expedite the process? Yeah. Um, and always carry cold beers in the fridge in the back of the truck. Oh, yeah, good currency. Yes. Yeah, smooth, smoothed a lot of situations over with a nice cold beer. Yeah, yeah, interesting. And to mention no names, a little birdie told me that you've um, applied for GC Manage. <laughs> yeah, I have, yeah. so so yeah, what, what are you looking for for that let's let's talk briefly about that just to be a better manager i think okay um one of the things that i've i've you know as i said i worked in recruitment so i would analyze clients and contracts and what companies could provide and offer and yeah. you know working for, for ground control since i've joined bearing in mind i joined with you know almost no industry experience and the level of training development the education that they've provided me is just i've never you know, again, not to sound nice, but I've never come across another company that provides you yeah. with the, the opportunities that these guys do. And with the the academy that's coming out now and the different options in there, again, I've spoke to other people that have done similar. And I think, you know, I've been a site manager now for about a year and a half officially, but I've got so much to learn, still yeah. got so much to learn. And I think, you know, anything that I can do to make myself a better manager and understand more about the operational side of things. Yeah. Um, yeah, should stand me in good stead moving forward in the company. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. So staying on learning, because again, I'm just because I'm particularly nosy. Outside of work, what's yes. the next thing? What's the next thing you would want to learn? So I'm, I, <laughs> I have been offered work. Uh, so obviously working in the private security, the private security industry for such a long time, mm-hmm. I've done some very like extremely low level stuff within close protection as well. So I right. have worked with some lovely people, Frank Bruno, Lewis Hamilton, a few other people, but again, nice. as I said, in, in, in really low roles, yeah. uh, but I've been offered some other work around sort of red carpet work for uh, the film industry. Yeah. So looking at potentially going on to that just as some additional work. Um, yeah. My FREC three, which is your first response emergency care course. So that's something that I'm self funding to go on again, because, Interesting. you know, although we, we follow everything procedure wise, incredibly safe on the team. It's such a high risk industry. And although yeah, we're all much. forestry, uh, first aid, uh, emergency first aid at work plus forestry, having that additional level uh, medical training, I think, would be an asset to the team. So that's yeah. on my PDP, but yeah. I'll, I'll self fund that. So that's a five day course, uh, right. emergency care course. <laughs> yeah. So there, that and my power boat license, they're all on the. Uh, oh, <laughs> wow. You've got to do something fun there. You've got to do something fun. So they're all on the cards for this year. Every year yeah. I've set myself 30 things that I want to do for the year. So oh, it could wow. be. Yeah could be read could be read 10 books could yeah. be go to 15 countries you know they're, they're all at different levels but i just kept finding that life was just passing me by all the time so i thought yeah. if you set these these goals to do through the year it's sort of like a little box ticking exercise and yeah freck three even my close protection on my pmc course and then my power boat license so they're on the cards for this year interesting and what got you into the close protection stuff because that's that's a very different role to this while i was at university it meant that i could work nights and weekends so i right. yeah i was cage, i was cage, cage fighting back when i was about 19 20 yeah and the guy that owned the cage fighting gym owned a security company obviously mm-hmm. vertical integration makes yeah. makes recruitment easy uh <laughs> so i started working as a as a door supervisor when i was about 19 or 20 um mm-hmm. did really well ended up running, running my own contracts taking over nightclubs and running my own doors while i was sort of nice. 21 22 which was was quite young and then like you do networking integrating and just worked on a few different things but yeah i got approached recently by a chap who's asked me to go into some special events with stuff now yeah. that the writers strikes been lifted in hollywood so it's not a glamorous job like everyone thinks it is <laughs> it's, yeah. but yeah it's 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 always good to have a sideline well if we're going to see you on the red carpet then maybe some sequins might be in the offing at this, at this rate <laughs> you know a bit jazzy for me though <laughs> <laughs> so what i normally do is, is i finish on a non-related kind of generally a non-job related question and i thought i'd kind of go skill wise with you because again you've been talking so much about things that you've learned things like that so what's the most unusual skill you've have you've had to pick up on the job that's a fantastic question that's thrown me that <laughs> um i think the most diverse skill that i've had to learn on this job I'm trying to think of something that's obscure <laughs> just doesn't fit in the, in the sort of the everyday verticals that a lot of it we use every day there's got to be something out there that i've done of course yeah um which is not 
not the norm. Well, I, I always joke that the only reason that I'm the site manager is because I was the only one that could read and write. Um, <laughs> I think the the most obscure thing I've probably done is been deputised by an ecologist to identify great crested newts because they weren't allowed to go into the water. And as a water rescue trained op, I oh. was. So I had to go in under the guidance and instruction of an ecologist to then yep. hand search for great crested newts. Wow. Unfortunately, I didn't, I didn't find any. <laughs> great example. I love that. So thanks so much, Andy. That's been great kind of finding out about you, hearing about obviously Mechman, because that's certainly something that's out there a <laughs> lot. Uh, and just, I suppose, not under the breadth of your role, but also the breadth of your interests generally with all the travel and all that kind of stuff so been really good speaking to you Andy really good yes. to have you on the podcast yeah thank you very much been a privilege to be honest there you have it Mechman himself aka Andy Sullivan fascinating chat and incredibly inspiring I'm liking the list of 30 things to do each year I think I'm gonna have to adopt that one myself please do subscribe like share and if you would like to be on the podcast then please also get in touch until next time Take care.